public, it, they may hesitate to express their strongly held views for fear that they will be, you know, censored by the community. So I guess there are, there are occasions when confidentiality is, um, is, it, is conducive to good decisions, and there are other times when confidentiality is just a camouflage to, pre to prevent the public from accessing information they should be entitled to. You know? yeah? then, then may I ask a que supplementary question? If that is the case, why don't we do what uh, Walter suggests, that they're just members of the jury, they speak yeah. for themselves. Why do yeah. we pretend they're representatives of the community? No, they, no, I think Walter's point is correct. It is not for individual members of the panel or individual members of the appeals committee to, to second guess what the community's view is. They are chosen to represent different segments of the community. The panel is a microcosm of Singapore, mm -hmm. and the appeal committee is a microcosm of Singapore. So each member of the panel and each member of the committee should make his or her best judgment of what is right and what is wrong. No? They shouldn't try to second guess what, what the community thinks. And I think if you, if you do that, then, then the collectivity of the panel and the collectivity of the, of the committee represents Singapore. But let, let, me, let me give the four panelists a last say. Eh? We've heard four questions from the floor. So can we go round the panel, beginning with Ken? Could you just make, respond to any questions you want? and share with us some concluding remarks. Um, <clears throat> just to address Charon's questions, uh, no, I did not pay him an astronomical salary to be <laughs> in this film to be berated endlessly by Adrian Pang. <laughs> um, I think Vadi saw what the, what the story w and what the satire was, and uh, he, he liked the script, he liked the story, and he said yes. Um, later on, when the film was banned, I think he uh, gave some interviews and he said that uh, he, he took the role because the film condemns rather than mm. condones racism. I think he, he saw yeah, that. So. Yeah. Um, yeah. Th so that's, that's uh, the answer to your question. There was another question about, I think, the... Uh, the trailer. That's a that's an interesting question for which I I don't have uh, the full answer. Why didn't they ban the trailer, and or at least censor the trailer instead of censoring the film? I think it begs the question. Um, how do you how do you go about banning or or ruling on a film just based on the trailer. That in itself is perhaps a problematic, a problematic thing for me. But I don't have the answer, the answer to that. Um, as it happens, what was censored in the film can be heard on the trailer. So if you go into the theatre and watch the film and there's all these beeps and you don't know what is being <laughs> said, all you have to do is go online and what was beeped is on the trailer. So all of it feels at some level a little bit absurd. I feel like I'm in some kind of Pirandello sort of situation. So I don't have all the answers. Perhaps the other panelists, yeah. Well, um, my parting words is just that censorship, we should really use it extremely cautiously. In this day and age, I think it is having increasingly less utility and Minorities perhaps sometimes don't need as much protection as others might think. Um, Hannah? Um, uh, although I agree with Mr. Arun that, you know, um, I, personally I believe um, in less uh, government intervention and in less government, particularly in the field of arts, um, but I do still believe in, a f in platforms, in committees, in panels that do discuss what we feel is good and bad for the society. So whether that process in the f is in the form of an FCP or whether that process in the films or whether it's in an academic setting like tonight, I think that we still need those kind of discussion and those kind of platforms. And for the lady who is representing the artistic community, take heart that 
that's another discussion on how society values arts in a community or in a, in a state. And I think if Dr. Tomiko wants to take that up uh, as a discussion in future, but take heart in the passion that you do and I wish you all the best. Okay. Um, uh, just a couple of quick things about uh, the question raised by Ken. The reason why the thing was censored was because some people said that we must have some sop to throw to the fellows who made the complaints. Mm -hmm. That political correctness requires that we cannot just say to them, no, we don't think you're right. As I said, I would have voted, in fact, most, most of us in the first round voted for 21 no cuts. It's only after the second round of complaints that some people said we must throw them a sop, I see. which some of us opposed, mm. right? but there was political correctness. Mm. On the question of funding for arts, there is not infinite funding for everything that an artist considers to be art. You compete with other people for that same pot. It is a mistake to think that artists have a right to funding. They don't. They compete like anyone else, and if they can't find government funding, then find private funding. And you don't complain that private, private um, patrons are stifling because they won't pay you, right? There have been a lot of starving artists in the world. It may not be comfort to you until you're dead that your art should be recognized, but that is the reality of life. Yeah. Uh, well, that's, uh, that's Professor uh, Tommy, yeah. if I could just address the, the young lady who is the... Who, uh, who asked the question of, does the government discourage artists because of certain decisions it makes or does or doesn't provide funding? Uh, here, here's something that I kind of went through myself and which I, I'm a lot more comfortable with now, which is I, I stopped asking why the government isn't supporting me. I just stop expecting it. If I get it, good. If I don't get it, well, I'm back where I started to begin with. As an artist, I always now, I think, begin with myself. What do I want to do? If I want to do it, and if it's incredibly difficult to do, I'm going to find a way to do it, no matter what. That's what I would do. Um, thanks, Ken. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I, I don't want the young artists here to feel discouraged by, by Walter's um, <laughs> um, realistic but cold-hearted. Uh, re uh, I, 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 I have a different view. I, I think that um, maybe from 1965 to about 19, in the late 1980s, 1990, um, our priority was to concentrate on um, creating jobs, building the economy, building our infrastructure. But when I think Mr. Lee Kuan Yew stepped down in 1990 and Mr. Go Chok Tong took over as the second prime minister, I think we, 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 we passed a watershed. I think there was a realization by the government and by other leaders of society that in the next phase of Singapore development, we should allocate a higher priority and more resources to helping um, culture and the arts to blossom in Singapore. And if you, if you look at the record of the government in the last 23 years, I think it would be unfair if you, any artist here were to deny the fact that there has been a sea change on the part of the government in terms of the allocation of money to improve uh, artistic infrastructure, to, um, to elevate the two arts colleges, NASA, NAFA and LaSalle, um, to start a school for, of the arts for talented high school students, to start a music conservatory, to, to give many um, bursary scholarships to talented young artists. I, I think it would be unfair to those of us who have laboured for the last 20 years to, to help arts and culture blossom in Singapore if you were to say that we don't support young artists like you, you know? I mean, many of us in the public sector have really worked hard to help you succeed. And if Ken Quack doesn't succeed, Singapore will not succeed. 
So, so Ken, um, please don't feel that you are alone. You are not alone. We support you. The, the notoriety that uh, Pond Masala has brought you 